What's up guys, it's Kay with 3 Point Technology, so for this video I'm going to be upgrading the stock one price so it may be too hot end with an Generon E3D V6 all major hot end. The main goal for this project is to have the all major hot end where it with the PTO V tube and heat throat where it sits right next to a nozzle instead of the small gap that is common in most crown hot ends like this and also to be able to shrink the gap between the nozzle between the heat block and the heat sink so I can fit a glass bit on my strike main V2 I wouldn't say this is an essential upgrade like the extruder drive gear on the Tabor Tornado is. This is more of an upgrade for a bare bed, grass bed, and bare parts. If you're planning on using the build tack sheets or with the somewhat okay hot end, you probably don't need this upgrade. So here we are with the Monoprize Direct Mini V2 the E3D edition but it's not a Generon E3D or at least it's not an all metro V6 E3D hot end so this one right here has some of the stock mild price hot end parts along with some clone E3D parts to try to get the heat sink to a lower gap between the heat block and the heat sink so the glass bed fit but with that the PTFE tube doesn't run all the way down to the nozzle this leaves a gap between the nozzle and the PTFE tube in that the filament doesn't feed correctly like it's supposed to which results in a delamination issue with the E3D V6 all metal hot end. The PTFV tubing will go directly against the mayor tube so that the filament will feed straight through it without any gaps between the parts to prevent a clog or heat deamination issue like I'm facing. But, anyways, I'll try to explain more of that issue as we um box and start to build the new hot end right now we're gonna get the e3d 12 volt Bowden all metro v6 kit here is the kit that comes in the bag that comes in the e3d v6 electronics 12 volt further unwrapping it we got a separate bag with the thermistor wires, heater wires, heater sock, fan, etc. Here's one of the hot end parts, thermal replaced heat sink, screws, heater block, and here's a PTFE tubing. Further removing the plastic bags, we have the fan, thermistor attachment, seat bed, heater cables, sock, the fan mount, heat sink, PTV tube in, Allen wrench in the hardware, heat block, nozzle, heat throat, clip, thermal paste. So next we can start the disassembly process. So quite a bit of disassembly has took place. And we unwrap the spare wrap around the wires, remove the PTFE tubings, tubing, took the Heat sink off of the mount, and that's pretty much what I've done. We will still keep this fan shroud mount, but pretty much everything else except for the PTFE connector will be replaced. So now we can turn the printer around and take the Z axis tower panel off, which will be the easiest way to get to the connector pieces for the heater cable and thermistor cable to be able to install the two new ones. Okay, so we've taken the back Z-axis plate off. We can get to the cables 
this is a piece that is mainly concerned with getting to but now that it's off we can start replacing the cables the heat thermistor and heater cable so we'll get started replacing those next step is the thermistor cable it's another plug connector so that one's easy as well so that rates one more cable to replace the heater cable and here's the heater cable it normally it's a plug switch but I haven't quite figured those things out yet they replace the cables and it's how this plug in like this that's how the one of our earlier built is wired as well so now is to test test out make sure all the cables working right and the heat's correctly and then we can start wiring it all back together cable management and putting the Z pipe back onto it Alright, so here is how it should fit. This is the reason I was getting the delamination edge to begin with. Is that the heat's heat throat and nozzle should be right next to each other. Like this, so there's no gap between it. This piece will sit inside the heat block like that. But there shouldn't be a gap between it. This is what I was having with the crowns and stock pieces. Having a gap so the filament wasn't going directly through it, but now with the Plinron E3D, there's no gap. Okay, so in this step right here, I inserted the nozzle to go about that distance, then inserted the heat throat and screwed it in place. Now that they're both in place, it'll be tightened so I can tighten the nozzle up a little bit more. Then add the thermal paste to the heat throat. This right here. Then once that's done, I can screw the heatsink cone. Then I can start adding the heat tour and thermistor and attach it back to the E3D mount on the printer. Alright, so heatsink, thermal paste, and nozzles all connected. We put the PTFE tubing inside here with the collet piece and these plastic pieces are here. So now it's assembled. What we've got to do is insert the thermistor and heater cables and attach it back to the mount. So on the grub screw and screw, they both work on the top mounts, so you cannot screw them on the bottom because they won't stay. Now that the new heat sink hot end is mounted, we can start doing the cable management and then put the Z axis tower cover back on. Now that the base and the axis back cover is on, we can put the fan shroud back on, put the spiral wrap back on and adjust the cables a little bit more, put the heat sock on, and then preheat it and start a print out on it. Now I've got it turned on, preheating. While it's preheating, I'm going to go and do some cable management to it with the zip tie. On the wires, PTFE tube is connected, so we're just going to do the textile sleeve and do some of these wires, push them in and pull them out a little bit more, depending on how much I need. And then once that's all done, and after it's all preheated, we'll do a test print and pet G. Alright, so we got preheat now. So in a few minutes, it should start printing, and then I have to do the first rubber calibration again since. We added a new hot end and replaced the old one. So all of that has to be changed. It shouldn't be off too much, but still it's not a bad idea to do a hot end for sort of calibration again. So here is the finished print, Marvin. This one was before I replaced the hot end, so you can see the difference, it's not too big, but now at least I'm able to get a glass bed on here instead of using the beard tack sheet, which will save money in the long term and give a better finish on the bottom of the print. So now the only thing I have to do is to put a textile sleeve back on and get the cables a little bit more organized. Man, I had a little bit more issues to deal with with the exterior motor getting that in shape. 
but overall, this is what it looks like. The benefits of this project is to do get it all made to a hot end. So that means the PTFE tubing and knives are set closer together than the crown ones or non all metal ones. It does give you a smaller gap between the nozzle, between the heat block and the heat sink. So you can go press play on and it's in Genron E3D so you do get the support and quality parks if that is something you're looking for. So there's a few benefits of doing this upgrade. The one minor issue that I have this upgrade is the E3D hot end fan that it comes with. As you can see I'll put that up using it. I just don't think that it's a strong enough fan for this. It seemed pretty weak when I had to own the hot end. So I switched it back out for the stock monoprice fan, which seems to do a lot better. But that's really the only major issue I have with this upgrade. But that's gonna wrap up the video for this week. If you like to feel this first, make sure you click subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.